What if you need to take a derivative of some function to some power? What if you need to take the derivative of some function to some power? Here's how you do it. This is called the chain rule. And here's how you do the chain rule. I can show it to you if you really want me to. This is what would happen. You'd say, okay, what's my, what's my function? You'd say y equals u to the n. True? Where u would equal f of x. Do you believe me? You follow still? That's what the chain rule would say. Well, this says, okay, if I took the derivative of u to the n, remember your power rule? Power rule says you bring down the exponent, you subtract 1 from it, true? This would say, okay, dy du would equal n u to the n minus 1. Follow me so far? du dx would be the derivative of f of x. That's, oh, how do I want to write it? I'll just say this. the derivative of f of x. You could write f prime of x. You could write that as well. Are you guys okay that the derivative of u to the n is n, u to the n minus 1, and the derivative of f of x is the derivative of f of x? Does that make sense to you? I'll write this way so we have a formula in just a second. Do you see the chain rule at work? We have dy du, we have du dx. So in order to find dy dx, we'll have dy du, times du dx. Well, what that says is do a substitution. That's n u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of your function from the inside. How much is u? What's u equal to? Because we, we did that composition. What was u in our case? So do that substitution back into there. And what you end up getting is n f of x to the n minus 1 d dx of f of x. Now, did we say anything about f of x at all? Do we make any qualifications about f of x? So then this should work in general, right? Anytime we have a function raised to some power, we could use the chain rule on it every single time. We led to a formula. I just invented this formula for you. Did you guys see it? It's kind of cool, right? Invented the formula for you. We, we did a composition. We can do that. We took the derivative here. We took the derivative here. We know that to get dy dx, we multiply those two things. Then we just do our substitution back in for u. What that says is, if you want to take the derivative of some expression raised to some power, all you've got to do is take the derivative of the expression times the derivative of the inside. That's what you're doing. Uh, bring down the exponent as usual, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's what this says in, in English. Look at, look at what it says. Bring down the exponent as usual. Bring down the exponent as usual. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside, the inside. That's what that says to do. Raise your hand if you feel okay with that. So do you have to show me all this to do it? No, I just proved it for you. Now, this, uh, this is kind of a proof for you to be able to do that. You get it? So in English, if you want to hear this in English, bring down the exponent as usual, as you normally do for the power rule. That's why it's called the general power rule. So bring down the exponent like it's a power rule. Just multiply by the derivative of the inside. You just can't forget about the derivative in the inside, because this thing matters for sure. If you don't have the 6x here, does it affect your problem? Yes. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, by a long shot. Okay, so that does matter. Bring down exponent and multiply by derivative of the inside.
Would you like a couple examples to kind of work through this? And then I'll, after that, I'll show you some more applications of the chain rule, stuff that we can do with some trigonometry, which I know you're going to love, right? Uh, stuff you can do with that and that you can't forget to, that you need to do with that. I'll show you how to work with the chain rule. And then after that, uh, we'll talk about implicit differentiation if there's a little bit of time. So let's assess this problem. If I want you to find dy dx, which is what I want you to find, could I just do this? Could I just take the derivative of this and this and this and leave it to the fourth power? The answer is no, no, because this is a composition. Do you guys see the composition? This you could cover the whole thing up and call it u, or sorry, call it, uh, yeah, call it u to the fourth. y would equal u to the fourth and u would equal this stuff. Does that make sense to you? We could do the chain rule here. Does this fall into the category of general power rule? Is it some function raised to an exponent? That's what we're looking for. Do you guys see the power rule in it? How we get the power rule? That says, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the power rule just like we normally would. We'll bring down the exponent, we'll subtract one from it. Just don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So you tell me what to do now that we've talked about it. What do I do? Good. Four goes down. Do I still have an expression here? Yes. yes. What's going to be on the inside of my expression? Do I change this at all from here to here? No, that's because that's the u, right? And you're going to be substituting back in for the u, ultimately, at the very end of any problem. So that inside, that's not going to change. That's this. Look at it. See how we still have a u and we substitute back in the original function to that? That's the original function here. You're still going to have that. So far, so good? Wait a minute. Right now, this is so far, so good? What's wrong? Don't really, you know what the biggest mistake people have? People do this, they bring down the exponent, and they forget to subtract from it. It's, derivatives are not that hard, right, of doing the general power rule. You know you're supposed to bring it down and subtract. But people always forget the exponent. Don't forget the exponent. So we do bring it down, sure, but that 4, that was an exponent of 4. We subtract 1 from it, we're going to get 3. Is that okay? Is, are we done now? No, no. We're, we're good though. We bring down the exponent, we subtract one from it, and now you get to do this part. The derivative of whatever the inside is. The f of x is the inside of your general power rule. It says, do this, do the power rule, no problem, leave that alone, and then multiply by the derivative of whatever was inside. Well, let's see. We got 4. Got the same thing. Notice how the calculus is done. Do you see how, what I mean by follow the DDX? Do you see what I mean by that? It's all about where the DDX is. That's what your calculus is. So here, this is staying the same. The only thing we got to worry about is that over there. What is it? If I leave it just like this, am I going to mark points off from you? Yes. Absolutely. Why? I need to have the parentheses firstly. That says I'm multiplying the whole entire expression. Now, you got a couple choices. You can move this thing out front, and you can distribute that 4 into there if you'd like. Just make sure you have parentheses around it if you do it. Does that make sense? So that you might see a problem end like this. You might see a problem end like this. Or you might see the problem end like this. Just make sure you have parentheses there, or otherwise, yeah, I'm going to mark you off, because that's a different uh, statement. Now, your question is, which one do you want, Mr. Leonard? And I go, as long as you need to hear, I'm happy with your calculus. Now, I want one of these two. I want one of those two out of you. What I can't have you do, don't keep going. Okay, there's no way you should ever foil this into the, actually it should be foil oil, right? Outside, inside, in order. But you should never do that because that's to the third power. You can't break the order operations. Exponents come before distribution or multiplication does, okay? So you can't break this rule. 
but this is this would be perfectly appropriate. How many people feel okay with this so far? Are you ready to see that we've been doing this literally the entire time with our power rule? See, the general means encompasses all, right? So check this out. If I give you x to the sixth, just a simple example, and I say, why don't you take the derivative of x to the sixth? You know inherently that that is 6x to the fifth, right? Yeah. Okay, inherently. That wasn't inherent, I guess, because I taught it to you. But you know it, nonetheless. But if you apply, if you apply the, the general power rule of this, check it out. If you said, oh, well, that's a function in terms of x. I'll write it a little better so you can really see it. If I said, that's a function in terms of x, could you do the general power rule to it? The answer is, yeah, you could. Check it out. You would do the 6 x to the fifth, remember that would be in parentheses, right? Because that's your function. Times the derivative of whatever's inside, only this time the inside is x. What's the derivative of x? That's why we didn't have to show that because the derivative of the inside is always the same thing, it's always just x. Do you get it? We've been doing the general power rule, we've been doing the chain rule the whole time, it just, it was simpler because we didn't have that inside. So that would become 1 and you get 6 x to the fifth. Interesting. We've been doing it. That's why it's called the general power rule, and we had the power rule before. You ready to keep going? Yeah. Okay. Let's try a few more. We're going to start building on this idea, though. Give me two ways to do that problem. Distribution is one of them. Give me another way. Now you have two ways to do this problem, right? As soon as I do this, do you still want to distribute? No, in fact, if they gave that to you before, that would be how you had to do that, right? Because there was no way to get rid of that 3 for you without foiling that all out and then distributing or foiling at least this out and then using product rule. In fact, maybe you had to do that on a couple of your examples and it's like, Arr, darn exponents. But now let's look at this for, for what it is. This is a derivative. Can you see a product rule in it still? Yes. Can you see a general power rule in it right now? Yes. Question is, which one comes first? General power rule. Well, half uh, of you are right. <laughs> <laughs> which half is the question? That's the, that's the question. Uh, which one, working from the outside in, which one encompasses more of the problem? You should be able to say this. You should be able to say this whole thing has to do with, hmm, does the whole thing have to do with the general power rule? Which means, is that exponent of 3 applied to the whole thing right now? No. Then that does not come first. Is the product rule applied to the whole thing right now? Then that comes first. Does that make sense to you? It'd be the same as this question. Which one would come first, a general power rule or a quotient rule? What do you think? Quotient. Definitely a, yeah. The general power rule is only applied to this little top part, right? It doesn't encompass the whole problem. The quotient rule encompasses the whole problem. That would come first, work from the outside inside. Now, if I did this, you'd hate me, first off. <laughs> uh, which would come first?